Suffering. For some, it's a stubbed toe, a broken arm, a power outage, the lack of clean water, the absence of food, and for many, trauma. Though trauma exists on a continuum, and one may argue what necessarily warrants the designation of trauma, inevitably they all involve pain. It's the pain that is universal. And this pervasive, ubiquitous nature of pain begs us to rethink its purpose. And today, I come to talk to you about the prophecy of pain. For physicians such as myself, alleviating pain is the resin that binds us, the alleviation of nausea, of vomiting, of bleeding, of fever, and many times simply the alleviation of fear. Pain has this inextricable ability to bind us together. In the hospital, we bond over codes, catastrophes, and cardiac arrest, but this feature of pain transcends medicine. As we've seen the human race come together when the World Trade Center crumbled before our very eyes in 2001 or when we heard about the unfathomable terrorist activity in Nigeria, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Turkey, and most recently in Brussels. Pain brings us closer to one another. We cry together, we mourn together, we grieve together, so much so that one may argue, despite one's profession, despite one's political affiliation, and despite one's religion, just as love is universal, so is pain. So why then is something so, so vastly pervasive, so extraordinarily hidden, shamed, pushed aside, and swept away? Our social media feeds are rife with the announcements of joyous occasions such as job promotions, engagements, wedding announcements, births, maiden travels around the world, and attendance at groundbreaking events such as TEDx Accra. But rarely do we share the proverbial darker ongoings of our personal life. Why? Under what tenet of decorum did we collectively agree that pain is unacceptable for public consumption? Poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar aptly captured this in his 1896 film entitled, We Wear the Mask. He wrote, we wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts, we smile. In mouth with myriad subtleties, why should the world be overwise and counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. But today, I challenge us all to rethink pain. Anesthesiology chose me probably more than I it for several reasons, but chief among them was a fascination with pain, both physiologically, but more so, honestly, what truly intrigued me was its socialistic unifying ability to level the most disparate of playing fields. Both my homeless alcoholic patients and my impervious corporate executive patients know what it is to pain. Pain has no face. As a junior physician, I get the opportunity to be one of the initial points of contacts with new patients. And what I've learned from this is that everyone truly carries a story. And as I spent many long days and long nights parsing apart these stories and weaving them back together in the lingua of medicine, it becomes clear that at the crux of each one of these stories is pain physical, emotional, psychic pain. But this truth was evident to me long before my time in medicine, as my years prior to healthcare were spent not in a pristine white coat, but rather alongside those at the margins of society. Out of college, I worked with heroin-addicted drug users in East Harlem. And after that, young veterans fresh from Afghanistan who found it more convenient and more affordable to numb their post-war pain with street narcotics in lieu of prescription opiates. I've sat in New Jersey County prisons with nonviolent offenders whose offense was also addiction, forcing their formative years to be spent in the endless spiral that is the United States prison industrial complex. I've talked to women from New York City who described that they never imagined a night would be spent in a domestic violence shelter and certainly not lying awake in a cot until the tentacles of abuse endangered not only her life, but also her child's life. And now, each day at Yale New Haven Hospital, I'm blessed and honored with the privilege to help our patients heal and be made whole, as pain is no less palpable in those hallowed halls than it was on the streets. Pain has no face. And what these experiences have taught me is that moving beyond the abuse, the addiction, the hurt, the trauma involves not running, not hiding, not shaming the pain, but rather realizing that behind each hurt, behind each tear, behind each twinge of humiliation is a purpose for that pain. 
Our challenge is to unearth it and use it as a spark to provide light where there was darkness, hope where there was doubt, and faith where there was fear, not only in our own lives, but also in the lives of others. In my own life, I've certainly felt pain, and I would even call myself a survivor. And I'd like to think that each one of us in this room has also felt pain. We stand, or rather we sit here today, relatively unscathed, still able to smile and laugh and interact with the world. Your, patient, your presence here indicating a desire to learn more, to grow, to push. And so this begs the question again, apart from its practical purpose, why do we pain? Great philosopher Aristotle described pain not as a sensory experience as we know it now, but rather an emotional one, almost akin to a deleterious spirit. A punishment, in that the very term pain derives from the Latin poena, which means penalty. And though we've moved from this penalistic understanding of pain and understanding it more intricately in terms of neurons and receptors, somehow this penalistic connotation has remained. And yet, for an entity as ubiquitous as pain, there must be some prophetic purpose. Well, I believe pain is a catalyst. It merits movement, it forces change, and the rhythm that follows is inherently distinct from the overture that preceded. It pushes us toward our destiny. In fact, many of those we deem as the greats have not arisen without pain. Their ascension was marred, if not rife, with painful experiences. Not spared was Nelson Mandela, who spent 27 years in captivity, only later to become the president of South Africa and a Nobel Peace Prize recipient. Or Martin Luther King Jr., who was also jailed, shamed, mocked, and persecuted, later to become one of the most revered civil rights leaders of our time. Or even Oprah Winfrey, who in her biography describes years of abuse and molestation by her own family members, later to become one of the world's first African-American billionaires and an inspiration to many across the globe. Or our beloved Kwame Nkrumah, who in Dark Days in Ghana describes years of political unrest and civil oppression that he endured only to bring Ghana to independence from British rule in 1957. Pain was their catalyst. So though pain may take something from you bit by bit, take pieces of your being, never let pain consume you, never let pain swallow you, never let pain dim your light by allowing you to move small, meekly mild, with heads bowed and hearts heavy. Rather, rise up. No longer should we quell in the shadows of our, our trauma. No longer should we sneer at the suffering of others. No longer should we let pain divide us. Rather, unearth your heart, remove that discomfort, share and release that dagger lying dormant. And as you do so, invite your neighbor, your brother, your loves, dare I say even your enemies, to do the same. As the one who hurts you, the one who terrorizes you, the one who puts their hands on you and spews venom on you is likely hurting just the same. All we have on this earth is each other. We only have one another. And in many ways, our earth is crying for healing, for peace, one that starts at the level of the individual. So as we move forward today, let us view pain as the start of our own ascension. See it as a mark of future endeavor, the rise into the true nature of your calling, that of Akwesi, of Abana, of Nana, of Kofi. Realize that there is prophecy in pain, that after a period of turmoil, your strength, your wisdom, your empathy, will burgeon you toward your greatness. So to wrap up, I challenge us all to rethink pain. Appreciate its instinctual messaging and its role as an alarm, that there is an action to be taken, a role to be fulfilled, a need to be alleviated, and the blessing, the doer, the giver, is you. Thank you.